Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Um, and this week's background mural is actually from Sunnyvale. So, you know, uh, right now we have the ut utility box program going and uh, we'll be talking about that if you, in a little bit, but, but this is one of the new artists, um, the artist's murals that are ending up on our utility boxes. And so, you know, happy to actually have more colorful art uh, in the public right away in, in, our, in our city. And so, you know, I, I highlight uh, murals from all over the world and, and happy to see uh, some beautiful art like this that's, that's appearing uh, within our city. So uh, definitely, and then we'll be talking about where those locations are in a little bit. Uh, but, you know, I think this is, this is exactly what we were looking for when we kicked off that program is to have, you know, colorful art um, replacing those drab utility boxes around the city. Let's go ahead and get started. Uh, good morning, Sunnyvale. I'm Sunnyvale Mayor Larry Klein. Thank you for joining me again this week. This is the 106th installment of my weekly office hours. Uh, you know, from a virtual standpoint, you know, welcome to spring. I hope everyone is healthy and enjoying the wonderful weather that we've been having. You know, we've now reached 739 days since March 16th, 2020, when the county health order started the shelter in place in an attempt to slow the spread of COVID-19. We've had our ups and downs over the last two years, uh, but, you know, two years ago or more than two years ago now, I converted my weekly coffee shop out office hours uh, at being seen uh, into these weekly live stream addresses. I haven't missed a week since. Um, I now, you know, follow those up on a weekly basis on Murphy Avenue. So if you want to uh, meet with me, you can email me, um, text me um, to reserve 15 minutes or 30 minutes or just drop in if you have a quick question. Uh, but people still say they enjoy hearing from their mayor each week, whether or not they watch this live address live or delayed, but, you know, it really, I really enjoy it because it allows me to provide you some general words of encouragement, some updates and news about what's happening in the city and different levels uh, around the, the county, the state, the nation, uh, and just answer some of your questions. Uh, but it, I just want to say thank you for allowing me to continue to represent you and work for Sunnyvale during an ever-changing time over the last two years. And uh, it has been interesting times, you know, we've all learned a lot about, you know, remote meetings and poor lighting, bad camera angles, and of course those, those technical difficulties that happen even sometimes Friday mornings, but uh, I'm, I'm really happy that we've been able to kind of build the community uh, through this, this emergency, which doesn't really uh, have an end. And, you know, so from that standpoint, you know, we've 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 all had to deal with uh, lots of issues, and I think you know we've we've mainly made it through. Uh, we still have a ways to go, but you know, um, one of the biggest messages from my very first session after I rewatched it last week was was the message of you know being generous, being kind, and being patient. You know, that really is the heart of our community. Uh, at the end of the day, it. It's, it's making sure that we, you know, we will get through it. It might not be easy, but, you know, definitely it's, um, it's hasn't been easy. And, and, you know, still I, I hear from people that are going through new issues or new problems. So uh, thank you for joining me again this week, as always, you know, over six months ago, I started changing my background art uh, with art provided by Sunnyvale artists from the Sunnyvale Art Club. This week's piece is called Flower Bouquet. It's by Angela Sue. And if you wanna purchase this piece or if you just wanna contact that artist to find out other pieces that they might have, just contact me and I'll, I'll put you in contact with them. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about what's happened at the federal, state, county, and city level over the last two weeks. You know, uh, beginning of last week, I was uh, in DC. And so, you know, at the National League of Cities. So this is our, this is one of the multiple conferences that the council members can go to, to advocate for the city, to learn about new, you know, new practices around the nation. Uh, and 
you know, it was a difficult, you know, it was a difficult few days between the time change and jet lag from West Coast to East Coast, but it was, you know, informative and, you know, it was, it was good to meet, you know, uh, Senator Padilla, which, which um, was good to meet him and his staff. And, you know, I meet uh, Ro Khanna, I did meet him while I was in DC, but uh, also meet his, his staff in DC, which is also important when we start looking at, you know, advocating for specific funding and all of that. Uh, but but from, from um, a city standpoint, I also met with the FAA, the Department of Transportation, looking for funding, looking at issues that, that need to be resolved. So uh, generally it was, it was a good, you know, four days there, uh, very short. I didn't even, you know, I, I didn't get a chance to visit a museum, which I usually spend at least an hour or two uh, going through. I did get at least one run through uh, the mall to visit some of the, the monuments there. But uh, ultimately, I think it was, you know, a good trip and, you know, my first time in an airplane in, in more than two years. So it was good to, you know, travel outside of outside of California for the first time, um, other than a quick trip into Oregon. Uh, but, you know, it, it's been it's been um, it was educational and, you know, it was good to actually hear some of our you know, federal representatives speak. So I got to hear, you know, President Biden um, in the conference room speak, you know, um, Speaker Pelosi, uh, Pete Buttigieg. So, so I, you know, it was, it was good to also see and hear, you know, in person, some of our, some of our um, federal representatives speak. So happy to, happy to um, be there and, and represent Sunnyvale. And then uh, last Tuesday, we had the, the first of several meetings to discuss the community center grounds. And so what we're looking to do is getting uh, public feedback on updating our community center um, and what people would like to see there. And a lot of that has to do with, you know, whether or not we retain kind of the lower pond um, and look at walkways, landscaping, open space, and, and conceivably also adding certain features like a playground, a picnic area, a dog park, an amphitheater, um, you know, other, other structures uh, for, for kids, for, for adults, you know, and, you know, there's currently an online survey, uh, which I posted about last week um, on what you might like, what you don't like, and what, what you would ultimately like to see at the community center grounds when, when we um, update that sometime in the next year or two. So uh, definitely, if you have opinions, uh, get involved uh, and, and join that. Uh, last Wednesday, um, the state legislators proposed a $400 tax rebate uh, for or rebate for taxpayers. Um, and it was basically calculated to cover the annual uh, gas tax of about 51 cents per gallon. Um, and so this would be, you know, uh, the, the, a, a general estimate to fill up a 15 gallon tank once a week for a year. And we'll talk a little bit about more of that later because the governor's office uh, came back with a counter proposal this week. And actually there's there's several proposals on the table at the, at the state level. So we'll be talking about that a little bit more. Last Thursday, of course, was St. Patrick's Day. Uh, and there was lots of music and lots of activity on Murphy Avenue. You know, uh, happy to see so many people out enjoying the good weather, enjoying, you know, our closed down um, Murphy Avenue, which is good. You know, I, I went to, I went to uh, Faber McGee's and had my annual corned beef sandwich and, you know, a, uh, a class of Guinness, uh, happy to meet multiple people. And, you know, um, it was good uh, to, to see people, you know, just being very amicable. And, you know, one table bought uh, basically balloons for another table. You know, there was a balloon, um, balloon artist there creating things for kids and all that. And it was, it was just good to, good to see that camaraderie, which, which was really nice. So uh, happy to be in somewhat of a new normal, but you know, definitely St. Patrick's Day kind of uh, was the kickoff of our shelter in place a few years, two years ago. And, and we're finally getting back to that live music and you know, uh, lots of people meeting on, on Murphy Avenue again. And now of course it's, it's you know closed complete until at least September, so enjoying you know that more European atmosphere, that plaza atmosphere. 
Um, last weekend, there were multiple events, you know, first, um, last Saturday, our new ACE hardware opened. And so ACE is, uh, that, that is taking the place of the Walgreens that was right along El Camino Real near Maria, near Wolf Road, kind of across from the Safeway there. Um, and they, and this is still their soft opening. Their grand opening will be in a month or two, but, but I've been by and, you know, um, they're still, it's one of their bigger stores, you know, so they've been, most of their stores are five, uh, four to 5,000 square feet. This is about 10,000 square feet. So they have a little bit more to fill it. They're still figuring out a few things on what live plants they would like. So if you do have, you know, specific things you would like to see, uh, go by the store and, you know, uh, they are taking requests, so to speak, uh, to, to see what our local residents would like to have. And so, uh, happy to see another, you know, another place to shop local within our city. Uh, and then, of course, last Saturday afternoon uh, was the Crow Ride, and that was sponsored by the Sunnyvale Bike um, Group and the, the Silicon Valley Bike Coalition. Uh, and so that was a ride that started at Washington Park and kind of went around the city in the four, in the shape of a crow, actually the route was, but kind of visiting different parks and talking about, you know, crow facts as well as uh, encountered a few crows on the way. Uh, it was it was good, you know, we had a little drizzle at the very beginning, but um, it turned into a beautiful day by the end of the ride. And then of course there were several um, holy festivals. So the, the Indian Festival of Colors, um, uh, Thursday, Saturday, uh, there's still events happening, kind of celebrating that, that beginning of spring, the, the triumph of good over evil, you know, I'm sure you saw some of the photos of, of me in, in San Jose, uh, covered with, covered with colored, uh, colored chalk, but, but it was actually great to, to be out to, to, you know, see so many people, uh, enjoying themselves, enjoying the out, that outside weather, and um, in, in celebrating that that festival of colors, which you know, uh, there just before there were a lot several events planned just before the lockdown two years ago, and haven't been able to really have one of those events for for two years. So so it's getting back to that that somewhat normal. Um, this week on Tuesday, uh, Sunnyvale City Council met, and we started with several special orders of the day. One of which was for Arbor Day, and there will be you know, an Arbor Day planting of trees coming up in April, and we'll be talking about that um, in an upcoming uh, discussion. Uh, it's also uh, American Red Cross Month. And so, you know, it's, if you donate blood, this is a great time to give it. You know, we had several representatives from the Red Cross uh, join us and, and help uh, celebrate that um, co commendation. And then finally, of course, it's Women's History Month. And so Laura Babcock, the director from um, Sunnyvale, the Sunnyvale Historical Society and, and Heritage Park Museum came by, joined our meeting and talked a little bit about some of the important women that really have made a difference here in Sunnyvale. So, you know, that was kind of the, the precursor to our general meeting. As far as our general meeting, we had several things that we uh, went through, one of which is we approved the request for additional funding from Sunnyvale Community Services. So we, we donated um, another $170,000 to support the Work First program that, you know, really makes a difference for some of the unhoused uh, participants. So this is, uh, the Work First program is a, uh, a partnership between Sunnyvale Community Services and downtown, and the downtown streets team to basically get um, some of our unhoused people back into jobs and kind of, and this is, and this is kind of a, a step up and kind of working towards, you know, a, a full-time job, uh, getting, you know, paying rent and all of that. And, and, you know, a few months ago, uh, and this program has been going on for quite a few years. It's like, um, I think it's seven or eight years now that the program has been going on. Uh, but, but HUD, um, housing Urban Development uh, was a federal funder for, for this program where they funded the city and we funded that program. And they've re reviewed the program multiple times since it's been in place and, and 
basically there was a new audit that happened and we've been audited before. And all of a sudden the new auditor thought that this program didn't really meet their requirements. And so uh, pulled the funding for the rest of the year. And luckily they didn't say refund us for the, the last few years for all of our funding towards that. But uh, ultimately, you know, we, we decided that um, definitely it, it is, it's a critical program. It helps, you know, with the point in time count uh, that, that monitors the, um, that, that monitors the number of homeless that we have here and, and collects those figures. It, you know, it funds the downtown street members. That program are the ones that are cleaning up uh, Murphy Avenue. If you go through there on, I think, Tuesdays and Saturdays. So you see them going around, picking up, you know, um, cigarette butts and, you know, um, napkins that might have, um, paper uh, napkins or that it might have been around falling into the street. And so, you know, this is one of the things that, that they're doing, all kinds of other training. Uh, and luckily, you know, LinkedIn is, is sponsored uh, the program for next year. So definitely it's, it's good from that standpoint that Work First is still, is still there. But, you know, um, happy that the council unanimously funded that program for this year. And then of course we received, uh, council received a study, um, the, the final report for a study issue that we kicked off several years ago, looking at adding cricket batting cages um, at Sunnyvale Parks. And so, uh, you know, there were multiple locations evaluated what the cost would be. Uh, ultimately we decided that there were kind of six priority parks, uh, Ortega Park, De Anza Park, Fair Oaks Park, Lakewood Park, Rainer Park, and Sarah Park. Uh, that would be uh, the first locations that we would be looking at adding um, cricket batting cages. And these would conceivably be multi-use batting cages uh, because they would also conceivably uh, have Little League uh, utilizing them too. So, so it was good from that standpoint, you know, um, and now we'll be looking at grants or private funding through partnerships to start building them. You know, the, the batting cages that are at several parks in the city right now were created through, through the Little League. So, you know, we've had a history of creating, you know, batting cages and, and things of that nature through those partnerships with our local groups and looking at state funding also, uh, you know, state and federal funding, whatever we can, county funding uh, to, to add that uh, resource, add that, you know, um, operationally add additional functionality that our residents might be, might want, you know, lots of uh, either cricket games that are going on within the city right now, either pick up games or, or, you know, um, weekly games that that groups get together and, and play in our, in our parks. I think Ortega Park is our biggest park that we see that. Um, but, you know, it's, it's, this is, you know, a request that we kicked off a study issue about three years ago and finally, you know, decided to fund that, finish the study, and now it's, okay, let's go ahead and start implementing those within our parks. And then uh, the last thing that we did at the meeting was we discussed returning to in-person meetings um, and trying to figure out a day when council will come back in person. And, you know, we already said that we would go to hybrid meetings when we ultimately do go in person, but, you know, generally the, the bigger, one of the bigger questions were, could council go in person and then, you know, have the commissions go later. And, and there was some discussion on that. The, the, our city attorney thought that that wasn't the case, that when we decide that there isn't a state of emergency to continue the remote meetings, uh, everybody needs to go immediately to hybrid meetings. Uh, that being said, you know, the, the county isn't currently um, in person, the you know, county supervisors are still meeting and all their, all their commissions are re meeting remotely. And so, you know, ultimately we thought that it was best to wait, you know, I'm thinking, I was thinking April, maybe now May is when we'll go back in person. And, you know, I, I talked to um, one of our supervisors and, and they said also that, that it'll probably be May before we go back in person. That being said, of course, you know, there's the new Omicron BA2 variant that is around the world, not really that much in the US. It's starting to have an uptick in the US and whether or not that will re-cause, you know, masking mandates and, and other changes will, will, is yet to be seen, uh, but, 
you know, it was, it's kind of prudent that at least for now we will hold off uh, returning to in-person meetings. And, you know, um, I think that's the, the safest as far as that's concerned. You know, all of our facilities are open. You know, you can go inside now. You don't have to be wearing a mask, uh, but most people are. Uh, and that's, you know, that's actually very positive. Um, and then on Wednesday of this week, <clears throat> Governor Newsom unveiled a proposal for uh, about $11 billion in relief for Californians. And this was kind of, uh, we talked a little bit about the rebate. And finally, you know, the more details came out, at least from the, the governor's plan. And so under Newsom's proposal, uh, registered vehicle owners would be eligible for $400 for each vehicle they own, uh, capped at, of course, $800 for two vehicles. And then this would also apply, uh, which I had some question about, to electric vehicle owners. So, you know, it's supposed to be kind of the the refund for the gas tax. And I understand we've, we've incentivized um, electric vehicle owners to own, you know, electric vehicles and be, you know, more sustainable, more envi environmentally friendly. That being said, you know, the, the refund to, to fuel um, EVs seems a little odd as far as that's, as far as the proposal is concerned. Um, and it's, you know, and that would be about $9 billion in relief uh, for, for the, refunds for the $400 refunds. And then there are also, you know, I think one of the big uh, new things that the governor proposed was providing um, $750 million in grants to allow tra transit agencies to provide free rides for three months. And I, I think that actually has a really good, um, is a really positive sort of thing. For one thing, you know, it's it's getting people out of their gas cars. and and getting people back into the habit of using public transportation, which a lot of people were really afraid of during COVID. So I think, you know, making, you know, all public transportation free for three months is also allows, you know, the transit agencies to get a better idea of how many people might, you know, might actually utilize it when, um, if it was free or, or, or greatly discounted. And I think that's, that's always a big question mark. You know, how many people would use it? You know, that, that's one of the things of, well, is it frequency? Is it cost? Is it a mixture of everything that keeps people from getting on public transportation? And I, you know, I think, you know, in general, I think that would make a fantastic, you know, a fantastic difference because also, you know, you'd get better counts for, for how many people might utilize public transportation as well as, you know, in the, in the grand scheme of things, figure out, you know, um, how many people, what ride, what, what routes are really, you know, uh, positive routes and, and also just getting people, you know, um, exposed to, oh, this is an alternate way to get from point A to point B that I really never tried before because I didn't want to pay for it and try it out. Uh, I think there's a lot of, a lot of pluses as far as that's concerned um, with, with making public transportation free. And I understand it's only for three months, but, but then it's figuring out whether or not that, you know, could continue. Uh, and then, of course, it had um, over 500 million in biking and walking focused transportation projects. And then it was also looking, um, the governor's proposal is looking at uh, quicker spending of the 1.75 billion from an earlier proposal to promote um, zero emission passenger vehicles and charging infrastructure. So, you know, and that's all the things that, that you know, that the city is promoting, whether or not it's our EV, um, EV program, uh, you know, things of that nature to, to add in EV infrastructure within the city. You know, it's, it's making sure that we can, you know, make those changes in everyone's lives as easy as possible for the better of our, of our um, environment in the long run. Um, so still needs to be finalized and there are, you know, several competing proposals in the state legislature. So, you know, but I'm guessing that we'll be see something in the next month um, as the different groups kind of negotiate what the right features are as far as the program is concerned. Uh, let's go ahead and get to our weekly COVID numbers. And if you have a question, go ahead and, and add it to the chat now, and I'll try to get to it before we finish. Um, 
Our COVID numbers across the nation continue to trend downward. You know, from a national standpoint, we've now had over 79 million cases, um, about 79 and a half, uh, cre increased about 200,000 in the last week. Um, and nationally, we've had uh, over 255 million people vaccinated with at least one dose. That's 81% of those five and older with at least one dose. And nationally, um, over 75% of adults are fully vaccinated. We still have people dying with, with COVID. Um, and we passed 972,000 deaths of people with COVID. That's another 7,000 in the last week, you know, but that has definitely been trending downward. Um, and then from a California standpoint, we've had over 8.4 million positive cases. Uh, we've dropped to about 2,100 a day now, um, which is down from 2,900 last week and uh, about 4,000 a day uh, a few weeks ago. And uh, we've, we've actually, our positivity rate is now down to 1.3%. So, so of those people getting tested, you know, very few are, are seeing, um, are being positive um, of having COVID. So, so that's actually very good for, uh, and then, you know, fatalities, we're still having some people pass away with COVID, about another 700 in the last week. Um, so we're at um, almost 88,000. Um, 88,000 deaths so far of people with COVID here in California. The county's still doing fantastic. You know, uh, we have, we're still having people uh, test positive with, with COVID. We've now uh, passed 308,000, but that's only 1,000 in the last week. So, and that's about the same as a week ago. So we've kind of steadied out to about 1,000 a week. Uh, from a county standpoint, we had 13 additional De uh, deaths uh, related to COVID, and that's where we passed the 2200 mark. We're at 2201 deaths within the county. And then, as far as vaccinations, you know, we're the best in the nation uh, with counties over a million. So we've reached 94% um, of those 18 and over are fully vaccinated, and over 69% of those that are eligible for the booster have already received it. So you know, it's really good from that standpoint, you know, I continue to talk to our county supervisors on, you know, on COVID, on, you know, other things advocating on our city's behalf, you know, we still have uh, the county test, uh, count, you know, the county is still coming to the city uh, the first and third Thursdays of the month at the community center from 9.30 a.m. to 4 p.m., uh, but you can go to secfreetest.org and see all the locations around the county that are available um, for testing. And then of course, um, as far as getting uh, vaccinated, you can go to secfreevax.org and see the locations that are still open in the county for those that wanna get their booster shot, that wanna get, you know, conceivably a flu shot still, uh, but, you know, lots of locations around the county that those are um, available. And, you know, as far as testing, you know, there's actually free tests that the county has made available for you to actually pick up if you need to do that. And then, of course, uh, let's go ahead and get to some upcoming announcements. Um, let's see. Let, uh, the biggest thing, I think, no real events that are happening this week, but as far as upcoming council meetings, um, that our next meeting is, is in April, so we have a week off, uh, April 5th, and you know, several things on the item, one of which uh, on the agenda, one of which are is a study session on grade separation, and I think that will be one of the big things, you know, we finally are, are um, narrowing in on the final uh, choice for, you know, we have two choices for Sunnyvale Avenue and Evelyn, as well as the Caltrain tracks at Mary and Evelyn. And so we'll get an update on those final um, final choices, and then you know figure out kind of direction. Uh, and then as far as the short-term rental ordinance, you know um, we will finally be making changes to that in the main meeting. You know we've been talking about adding fines for for those landlords that aren't following the city's uh, laws as far as you know hosting and making sure that you know people aren't you know, having big parties like, like the one that happened last year. Uh, let's go ahead and get to our weekly questions. So if you have a question, just add it to the chat now and I'll try to get to it. Uh, but I got a good number of questions this week. Uh, Flo, Florence asked, 
Uh, where can I help volunteer? I want to give back to my community and, and looking for different ways to do that. There are lots of ways to get involved. Uh, from a city standpoint, of course, you know, we have our boards and commission recruitment, and that's currently underway. And this is usually our mid-year recruitment is really big because we have board members in our commissions that are expiring uh, either, you know, after four years or, or eight years. And we constantly have people, you know, that are either moving out of the city or realizing they're too busy to be on a board and commission and resign. Uh, but we have, you know, Pretty much, I think every every commission has um, uh, at least one position open. So we have our art commission, three positions on our um, BPAC, our bicycle bicycle and pedestrian Adv advisory commission, uh, the board of building code appeals, the board of library trustees. There are two positions on the heritage preservation commission, three on the housing and human services commission. Uh, someone uh, a position on the Parks and Rec Commission, personnel board, two on the Planning Commission, and two on the Sustainability Commission. So lots of opportunity to give back to the city, depending upon what your interest might be. Applications are due um, um, by 4 p.m. on Thursday, um, April 30th, I think, and um, with the scheduled meeting um, on, I know, I think it's Thursday, April 24th. I'll post about that later. Um, and then a scheduled council meeting interview on May 9th and May 10th. Uh, but, and, the, and, the, and so that's one thing you can do is boards and commissions, always good to get those recommendations and get giving, get having people, you know, getting involved in what's happening in, in their city. Uh, but there's lots of other opportunities too. You know, the Sunnyvale, uh, friends of friends of the Sunnyvale Library are always taking volunteers. That's one of the big things that that um, they need as far as helping with setup and you know organizing books for for their book sales. We had a book sale last weekend. Uh, I wasn't able to attend, but I heard it was very busy. Um, and then of course, as far as upcoming events, um, it's a little far out now, but. But we are looking from a city standpoint, looking for volunteers. So, so Saturday, May 14th, so May 14th um, is Hands on the Art. Um, so Hands on the Arts is a yearly event that we've had for many years. Um, I think last year was the 25th, 26th. Uh, this, I think, might be the 26th year. Um, Hands on the Arts is a um, basically a youth-oriented Hands in the Art event that happens at the community center at the senior center. Uh, this year, it's actually going to be um, upsized, and there, there's going to be the the multicultural event. And this is one of the things that council decided last year that we will have a multi multicultural event every year. And this year, at least, it's going to be combined with the um, Hands on the Art, so it's going to be happening at the same date. Um, and the multicultural event will will be, you know, uh, different dance and music and art and a kind of, so it's not just for, for youth, it's for, and the kids, it's for everyone. And, um, but so the hands on the art event and the uh, multicultural event is looking for volunteers. So if you want to, to give back to the community, help, you know, plan, help uh, activate that, that big event, you know, now is your time, now is your chance to get involved. Uh, so, I'll be posting about that, but if you go to the city website um, or the city Facebook page, you'll see um, there, there's been calls for volunteers for both of those events. And, you know, it's great to see the kids enjoying themselves, getting, you know, getting involved in different art projects all around that campus. Uh, and, and then, you know, this year, because of, you know, um, having the multicultural event, I do think that it'll be even better, you know, as far as what you, what you people are able to see, to enjoy as far as that's concerned. So uh, that's at least two volunteer items. You know, the, the historical society is always looking for, for docents, you know, Sunnyvale Community Services is always looking for people to help package food or deliver food uh, to, to people that that are there on a weekly basis for, for collecting um, food. You know, our daily bread uh, does brec uh, lunch Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at one of the local um, at one of the local churches for anyone who needs food. And so, you know, there's lots of opportunities in our city to 
to volunteer, uh, whatever you might want to do. Uh, let's go through some other questions. Andy asked, how many stories is the new two, is the two buildings replacing the old Macy's? So actually there's several buildings that'll be there. Um, the two, so right along Washington Avenue where the, where the Macy's used to be, there will be uh, two office buildings and they will be a seven story office building. It's basically a, a retail on the bottom and six stories of office building above. And so this will uh, basically continue uh, Francis um, from the Caltrain station south. And so it'll actually go between these two buildings. So where, where Francis dead ended into the Macy's previously, um, it'll be, create a plaza there. And then it'll actually go to the two levels of underground parking that, that if you go down to downtown now, you'll see uh, that's majorly under construction there. It's digging. Thank you. 
walk is not called to the Let me 
COVID. And this six around which So thank you all Because 
Bye.